had his own rules and regulations and they awarded their own diplomats. And he came under the single umbrella of the West African Postgraduate Medical College. Now, so from 1973, West African Postgraduate Medical College went into operation and along the line awarded their own diplomas. So then you find, as of now, fellows of the West African College of Surgeons and then fellows of the West African College of Physicians. But by 1985, or certainly early 80s, politicians, especially the health ministers, had become a little worried about the outputs from these uh, colleges. Their impression was that the colleges were not delivering. Of course, they needed to have physicians uh, in every nook and cranny, if possible and if affordable. But they were not coming up. Well, I don't think the problem was mostly, it's difficult to apportion the blame and say it was fully that of the West African Postgraduate Medical College. Because these were periods that uh, the economic goings in the nations in West Africa were rather tough. People could hardly get uh, chemicals in their laboratories to teach. There were hardly drugs. People had to scrounge around to get drugs to buy. It was a difficult period. And uh, so obviously things were not going to be as successful as uh, one would wish. But be that as it may, there was a general feeling that uh, the colleges were not delivering. And there were memories around. Senior doctors in Ghana, the Ghana Medical Association, the trainees themselves, and indeed officials of the Ministry of Health were beginning to wonder whether Ghana should not really have its own college. And indeed, I, I did cite the memo as far back as 1985, which the ministry obviously had made up its mind that they were going to have a college, although this was not, uh, had not been put to the public. And that is what we set out to do from October 2001. That is when I got appointed as the acting rector. Now, we started in the offices of the Medical and Dental Council near the Coco House, where I happened to be the chairman of the council. So I had a muscle to push people around and seize an office for, for the college. Because, uh, believe it or not, when I got appointed, I wasn't told that this is for your office or this is your vehicle, or this is your salary. We are just giving a letter, two paragraph letter, and saying you've been appointed after you give us a point. Members, residents of the college, and our sister colleges. And this we did with, on social media platforms. So this has been done already. And today we are organizing this press soiree, basically to sensitize the media. We have invited all major media houses, both print and electronic, to brief you about the 20th anniversary and the activities lined up for the celebration. So that is for April. In May, we would be having the launch of the 20th anniversary. That's a formal launch of the 20th anniversary of the college and the first public lecture. And this we have scheduled for Thursday, the 18th of May, 2023, it will take place at the college um, secretariat and it will be starts from 2.30. Then in June, we have media rounds and this we have scheduled interviews by selected key uh, college officials. So we'll, be, we'll need the media again to the media houses to conduct interviews and tell you more about the college. In July, we have the health, health walks, there will be one in Accra and simultaneously in Kumasi as well. And also health screening in selected deprived communities. And this will take place in Accra and Kumasi. In August, we would have a second public lecture. And then, and then also we would have a fundraising dinner. And this will be held in Accra. We will tell you more about that. Then we move on to October. In September, we have uh, major college activities like exams, so we don't have any activity in 
about the 20th anniversary in September. In October, we would be having a museum exhibition. We have a museum, a health museum in the college, and we would invite secondary schools to visit the, and, 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 and like an excursion for them. So the museum exhibition will be set out in October. And then we'll be doing a donation to the community. And this is, a, we have settled on a donation to the Wager Leprosorium. So this we would be doing in October as a college. In November, we'll have our third public lecture. And this also, and also we'll be having a launch of a special 20th anniversary brochure as well as a documentary about the college. So please watch out. In December, which will be crowning our activities, we're going to ha we'll have our 20th anniversary annual general scientific meeting. We'd we'll also have poster presentations and exhibitions. And we will crown it all with a Thanksgiving service in Accra and also in Kumasi. We are kindly appealing to you, our friends of the media, to spread the information about the 20th anniversary um, celebrations of the college far and wide, both in the electronic and the print media, and help us make the 20th year a remarkable and a memorable one. So on this note, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very much for your attention, and God bless us all. Thank you very much. And as soon as the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons was established, the drain slowed down considerably. So that is the situation that we had. So the college slowed it down. And because of that, we had quite a good number of doctors at a time when uh, things were difficult and uh, these doctors stayed and were working. But imagine what would have happened if the college had not come into being. They would all have left, and uh, healthcare in Ghana would have suffered considerably. Okay, so so you are, I, I guess you asked about what what are the challenges that um, the college has faced to date. I think some of those challenges, the challenges to do with the um, establishment of the college, Professor Nyami talked about that. I mean, some of the challenges going forward with the training is to do with the numbers of um, specialists that we turn out. The country has, our population is growing. We are, we are, we are, we are moving quickly towards um, 30 million. And the number of specialists that we need in the country, we still don't have enough in terms of the specialists to the population ratio. And the people who are coming in for the training are also going in for some particular specialties like um, surgery, obstetrics, and gynecology, you have large numbers of people going in there. But we have very few people entering specialties like um, radiotherapy, laboratory, medicine, for, for, for instance. But we need many people getting into these specialties so that we can meet the health needs of the government of, um, of, the, of the people of Ghana. Another challenge, one of the things that holds back we've been able to roll out specialist training to the level that we would like is the issue of equipment in our, in, in, in our hospitals. Because you, we are limited in the level of training that we can deliver, especially in the area of um, subspecialist training, based on equipment available in facilities. I mean, we are pleased to hear of the government agenda 111 and the putting up of hospitals. It's important for us make sure that these hospitals have the appropriate equipment that we can use to deliver service and also provide training. In addition to the equipment, I mean, places where we have the public hospitals, sometimes the problem is maintaining the equipment. We get great equipment in, but we don't have the support services to make sure that these equipment are running all the time. In a specialty like um, radiology, you could get residents who are supposed to do a rotation in the MRI or CT scan units only to be sent there and to find out that the MRI machine is not working. And it might not work throughout the residence and period of um, 
attachment there. To address these problems, we are, we've, we've started working actively on partnering with um, private, private and, and let's say semi-private institutions. Um, there are some of there are some top-notch hospitals that are government affiliated, but not kind of like fully government-run, like the National Maritime Hospital, the Bank Hospital, which have very top-notch equipment. We are talking with them in order to partner with them so that the training can be smoother and our doctors will have access to modern um, equipment that's used in the 20th century. So these are the equipment challenges that we are. We are getting. You're talking about. You also mentioned things about doctors and nurses. I mean, is it complaining about their conditions of service? Is that what you said? Right. So, in terms of the the conditions of service, we are also. I mean, this college is an agency of the Ministry of Health. We are actively talking with the with the ministry and um, also about the funding of the postgraduate training and. We've had um, meetings with um, different stakeholders, including the GMA, the, the ministries, and um, the, the teaching hospitals, where we discuss things to do with um, conditions under which doctors would work and what all these different health-related bodies can do to improve the conditions. I mean, we can't, we can't look totally to government, for government alone to do it all. We need to ask ourselves, what things can we put in place so that um, the environment around which um, doctors work in the hospitals, and in terms of also income generation within these hospitals, how can we improve it apart from the direct salaries that are being paid by government? So these are some of the things that we are engaging in to try to overcome the challenges of training and the challenges that are faced after training when um, people graduate. Akwele Okechi, I write for the Daily Guide newspaper. Yes. Um, I noticed that one of your mandates is to contribute to policy formulation. If you would kindly share major policies that this uh, college has contributed in formulation, how that has impacted the uh, public health system. Thank you. Is the contribution to policy. I mean, over, over the past years, the college has been involved in many collaborations with the Ministry of Health. There are different um, health um, policy meetings that we are, we are invited to. I mean, currently, I think in next month, there's going to be a meeting on um, coming up with a policy on infection prevention, where the, 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 the ministry has invited us. The college is sending a representative from the Faculty of Lab Medicine, and we will make an input to that policy. Sometime um, earlier in the year, there was there was a finalisation of um, a family planning um, policy by the Ghana Health Service. So the the reproductive uh, the family health um, division invited us and represented by one of the gynaecologists in in that um, discussion. We we work closely with the Ghana Health Service and we are regular participants in their senior managers um, meeting where they discuss different policies to do with um, health service delivery. So in that sense, we contributed to policy. These are things that we, we do. However, we would like to be more active in the, in the whole policy space. One of the things that makes it hard for us to be seen, and um, uh, our immediate past president talked about visibility, is that almost every specialist doctor that you, you ask to come to contribute to policy, a policy um, discussion is a fellow of the college. Some of them are members of the college, but they are sometimes invited there as individuals, and it looks like Ghana College is not contributing. But then every single specialist in the country who takes part in some policy dialogue is indirectly representing the college. Now we are going to be more proactive and let people go waving, waving the college, the college um, logo. I mean, you, you all see it up there. You should capture it on the on, on your thing. So when people see this, they'll know that um, this is the, the the college. So these are some of the things that we, we we we've done in policy. But then we've we've in recent times worked a lot on the in, in policy things regarding the training of doctors. One of the big challenges, which is 
was probably beginning to lead to um, a reemergence of the brain drain. It's a long time that um, doctors took between when they graduated from school and getting into um, rest into, into specialist training. We, we've over the past two years worked with the, the minister's office and there have been changes in, in this, in this, in this um, policy that have been worked on by the, been approved by the Ghana Health Services Council so that doctors can get into training earlier and they don't have to wait for so long before they get into specialist training. There have also been policies that have, um, would make it, it, let's say, faster for doctors to enter areas where many people are not entering, like I mentioned lab medicine, ophthalmology, and radiology, radiotherapy, where people can enter these programs right after they finish their housemanship training. So we've worked with the ministers of who's come out with policies that would enhance the um, training of um, postgraduates in addition to our contribution to policies on health service delivery. But we really need to do, do a lot more to be more visible in the policy arena in the country. Thank you. Surgeons, they want to be obstetrician gynecologists, but there are certain areas where we call them that people do not, do not uh, actually go into that area. Okay, an example is laboratory medicine, which happens to be my faculty. Um, psychiatry, which is even getting better, that radio, radiology, uh, radio oncology, where people are not um, going into that area. But we need all the specialties. So now, as Rector mentioned, we put in policies, which actually has gone through the ministry to cabinet, so that in those areas which we may call the orphan areas where people are not going you get people to go in there and of course when it comes to sponsorship they are sponsoring people in terms of financially to go into those areas because we need all those areas like laboratory medicine and the laboratory medicine which is my faculty you have um, hematology you have chemical pathology you have a uh, micro medical microbiology and then you have chemical pathology and so you need to make sure that you have all that. But if we don't do, we don't, we are not intentional about training people to go into the orphan areas. Then you have a lot of the areas where, you know, obstetric gynecology, surgery, and then you realize that in the, at all the other areas you don't. And we need each other to be able to work properly. So that's why the college has come out with clear, intentional, um, it's been intentional about making sure that we, we direct people into those areas through, fine, uh, through I mean, supporting them and sponsoring them um, to go into, or through scholarships to go into those areas.